Hi everyone, in today's video, we're going to talk about one of the best features that we got with C Sharp 8. I haven't seen this feature utilized enough, especially inside Microsoft. I've seen a handful of projects actually use this in their code bases. By the end of this video, then you'll be familiar with iAsync Enumerable. You won't be afraid of it anymore. And I have a feeling that you'll start seeing many places that you can use it today in your applications or as you develop new features in your application, then you'll suddenly say, ah, this is a good place to use iAsync Enumerable. If you're new to the channel, then first of all, welcome. My name is Amichai. I do have a quick disclaimer that even though I work at Microsoft, I'm not talking on behalf of Microsoft, also, if you're watching this and you're not subscribed yet, then pause the video, smash that subscribe button, and let's get started. Okay, so let's imagine we have the following scenario. We have the numbers API, which internally has the numbers from zero until 99, and it supports listing these numbers, and the maximum page size is 10. So the maximum that we can list in one time is the number zero to nine, then we get a next page token, and we can use that to fetch the next page, and so on. So this is the API that we have. And on our side, on our application, then what we want to do is we want to fetch these numbers, run it through some prime number computer to check if the number is prime. And if it is, then we want to store it in some primes list. So let's say we want to take a look at these numbers and find the first five prime numbers. Okay, now I'm giving five as an example and the numbers API as an example, but just replace this with, with whatever API that you're working with or different scenarios that fall under the category of what we're talking about today. Okay, looking at the environment that I set up for today's video, then we have over here the numbers client. And like we can see from the documentation that it returns a list of numbers in the range of zero to the numbers in stock, which is 100. So it's called list numbers and it returns the numbers response where the numbers response is composed of the list of numbers. And we have here also the next page token that we can use to now fetch the next page of numbers. And if we look at how it's actually implemented, then we have here some arbitrary delay to simulate as if we're making some API call. And over here is the actual logic where we create the list of numbers and we return the next page token. You can pause the video, but it's just something that GitHub Copilot wrote for me. And if we look at the main program, then what we have over here is a method that's called list all numbers. And what we do over here is we call list numbers again and again, while we have a next page token. And we have here a list of all numbers where each iteration, we add the numbers that we received from this method to the list of all numbers and we return it over here, then we pass these numbers through the is prime computer that returns true or false if it's a prime number or not. Then we take the first five and we print the numbers to the screen. Okay, so if we run this now, so we say dot net run. So it'll take it a few seconds and we'll get the response. Okay, we got the response. It took it a few seconds. And we see we have your two, three, five, seven and 11, which is correct. This is what we want but why did we have to wait so many seconds if we're only using the first two pages and the reason for that is that we're iterating through all the pages all the 10 pages even though we're not using the next eight right so this is easy to demonstrate let's just put here some printing to the screen and let's say yeah something and we can see that we're calling the method again and again waiting 500 milliseconds and we're calling it 10 times, even though we're not using the next eight pages. Okay, how do you fix this? Well, it's an easy fix. All we need to do is say here, I enumerable, and instead of taking all the numbers, then we can get rid of this. And here, use the yield keyword to return the numbers one by one, and then we'll continue requesting the next pages as we're iterating over the list of enumerables. That's when it's invoked and it goes through the loop again. So if we run this now, then we expect it to be invoked one time. And that's because in the second page, then we return here the number and the application is over without arriving to this line. And that's what we get. Of course, it was much faster than the first time. Okay, but as you probably noticed, we have here the numbers client that's making this call synchronously. We're blocking the main thread 
while we're doing this computation. Of course, your clients aren't going to be synchronous. So let's make this asynchronous and let's see where we run into an issue. So let's say over here that we're going to await this instead of waiting it and blocking the thread. And over here, let's say async task. And back over here, let's say await. And because this method is now asynchronous, then we need to say over here, static async task of this thing. But once we change it as following, then we can no longer do this because if we look at the error, the body of list all numbers cannot be an iterator block because task of I enumerable event is not an iterator interface type. And John Skeet, the legend himself, is telling us over here that we can't use the yield keyword with the task return type. So the question is, what do we do? Now, what I've seen most projects do is the following. Say, ah, I can't do this. Okay, no problem. I'll just do the following and they revert back to what we did before. So they have, yes, something similar to this. Then over here, they add it as following and in the end, they return the list of numbers. Okay, what we need to do now is say over here, await on this entire thing. And now we can continue like we did before. But the problem is that now again, we're iterating through all the numbers and we're fetching all the pages even though we don't need to. So how do we solve this? And that's where I async enumerable comes into place. So what it allows us to do is change this to I async enumerable and we can revert back to the previous implementation. So we can get rid of this, get rid of this. And over here, we can use the yield keyword. So now this method over here compiles and this doesn't. So let's change our code to actually use the I async enumerable. And we're going to see why I think this wasn't accepted well. So the way you use it is you need to say await and then say yes for each, call the method. And then over here, we have the number that we can now manipulate. So what we can do is we can say over here primes and initialize it to a new list. Then over here, we can say, okay, if the, let's call the is prime computer is prime, pass it the number. And if it is, then let's add it to our primes. And then if the, we have five primes, then let's break from this for loop. And then over here we can, yeah, let's say call the first five primes are and so on. Okay. And now we can see that it called our method twice. Again, the second one wasn't because it's after the yield keyword and we get here our prime numbers. Now, no one wants to write this kind of code because it's not fun. And I think that's the reason why no one actually used it when it came out. But there's a great package called system.link.async that we can use. So let's say dotted add package system.link.async. And when we add this package, then we'll see how it makes our life much easier. Great. Now we can get rid of all this ugly code and instead say the following. Await list all numbers. Then we can say where the number passes our is prime computer method. And we can say take five and we can say to list async, which will actually make this entire thing be invoked. Now, if we run it, not this. Now, if we say dot net run, then this will run the code that we wrote. And we can see that we have here only this print to the screen. That's because I forgot to print the numbers, but we can already see that it's called listing the pages twice. And that's why it's printed only once to the screen. Now we can iterate over these numbers and print to the screen, or we can do something nicer, which is for each async. And then we can print it to the screen, which it'll also materialize the list and it'll stop after it receives five. So if we run it now, then we can see that we have here only what we need. And now we have beautiful code again, something that is fun writing and also is concise. Now the system that linked that async has many really, really great features. So if this is prime method was is prime async and it would run asynchronously, let's say over here that we have, I don't know, await test.delay and let's say one second. And over here, we need to say async, then back over here, let's say await. And now we need to say 
that this is async and we can use the where await method that comes with this library and we can put here a synchronous logic as well which means that if you're using it and this is actually calling some api and let's say every call to this api is very expensive be it latency be it the price that you're actually paying towards your quota of the number of calls that you can make so you can have over here whatever logic computation that you need and you don't have to iterate through the entire list or do things synchronously in a blocking way hopefully you already see places in your application that you can use it and what i do is every time i find myself writing task of innumerable something similar to this or that's what i want to write or task of list then i ask myself if it's a right to use here i async innumerable together with the system.link.async package so that's it i hope you learned something new and you enjoyed it if you did make sure to smash that like button and i'll see you in the next one